Hello everyone, this is M. Fortune of Numinous Press and today uh, we're going to do a video uh, to talk about the basics of Kabbalistic color. So that the subject can go really really deep but again we're just going to kind of stick to the basics just enough to hopefully get you started coloring in the great workbook or in your own personal studies of Kabbalistic color. So for this video, we are going to be using the Great Workbook, which, if you don't know, is a journal and activity book for tarot symbolism. And inside here are several activities and journal pages, um, but the activities are for logging symbols and colors in a way that show the relationships between tarot, astrology, and Kabbalah. Uh, we have a video up that is a walkthrough of this book um, on the same channel. If you're interested, so I'm not going to show you that through go through the whole book today. We're only going to focus on those parts that are related specifically to Kabbalistic color. Um, so to help everyone along in using this book, we put a reference section in the back, and in that re reference section is a lot of charts that show um, things like Hebrew language. Um, symbols and tarot cards it's right here and you can kind of see there there's a lot a lot of stuff but for this lesson today we're going to be focusing specifically on um the kabbalistic color scales and the just to go over briefly the way this chart is built um, and we will come back and kind of make connections to it a little bit later. Uh, but just to briefly explain how this chart works is you have the four color scales. As we spoke about in our fourfold lesson earlier in the video, this would be the king scale. This is the queen scale of color, the emperor scale, and the empress scale. And up in here you can see, hopefully you can see, there are, um, symbols in each box to help guide you. Um, and right here, uh, for example, you'll see symbols for your tarot card suits, for your elements, for Hebrew language, and the name of the four world that this color scale belongs to. Over on this side over here, you see a numbering system that numbers from one all the way down to 32. Um, and you can see it's labeled uh, based on what parts of the Kabbalah that this chart is referencing, whether it is the Sephiroth or the Paths. Um, and um, that would be your 10 Sephiroth and your 22 Paths down here. So then you can kind of start to chart which color belongs specifically to each part. Of the Kabbalah and once you learn how to read this then you will be able to do the same thing with your tarot cards that way you would know that something like the two of wands will be represented by pure soft blue right there um, so this is there so that you didn't have to buy any other books to begin coloring in this book this is this is really all you need um, that and a set of color pencils and you can just go to work coloring once you learn how to read this chart. Um, however, um, one of the things that I did want to show you in the video, for those of you that actually maybe want a little bit deeper dive into uh, the concepts of Kabbalistic color, whether it's history or um, just just uh, deeper knowledge in general, um, I'm gonna show you a couple of decks and a few books uh, that I've used to uh, actually create the workbook and to do a lot of studies on Kabbalistic color. And so let me put this away and we will come back with a few decks in a moment. Um, we're going to look at these books and also a couple of decks, but we'll start with these books. Um, these are the books that I have used for many, many years. Uh, obviously, uh, 
because of the deteriorated state of them. They've been very used, very loved books. But these are the three books that I use the most in reference, referencing anything Kabbalistic, but especially Kabbalistic color. Um, we'll take a brief look at each one. The first one is kind of the official book when it comes to charting Kabbalistic things, especially color. Um, it is 777 and it is written by Alistair Crowley. And this book has in it, if you don't know, if you've never seen this book before, I'll show you what's been dubbed in our house as Crowley's spreadsheets. Um, you can see in here, there are charts, there's several charts all throughout the book. Um, and what Crowley was trying to do with all the many, 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 many charts that are in here is he is trying to map out uh, not just astrology and tarot, but sometimes mythological ideas, um, Hebrew concepts, um, all kinds of stuff. He's trying to map them all out Kabbalistically. So every chart will have these little numbers in here, which show you its position on the tree of life or the Kabbalah. Um, this is a really good book to have for anybody that's studying uh, occult information. Um, the other one that I use the most is uh, another one by Alistair Coley, and it is the book that goes along with the tarot deck, The Book of Thoth. Um, this one in the back of the book at least in this uh, very, obviously very, very old edition, reprints the same Kabbalistic color scales that um, are in 777. So if you have this book and you're only interested in the colors, you don't really need 777. It's in this one. Um, The other book I use a lot is Dion Fortune's Mystical Kabbalah. Um, I love this book. I always come back to this book. I have for over 20 years now. Um, but this book does not go into any path work. This is only her book on dealing with the spheres or what are known as the Sephiroth or the Sephira, if it's um, singular. Um, and she only talks about this, the Ten Spheres. Um, but something she does in this book that is interesting is she reprints only the most essential information that's found in 777 at the beginning of each chapter for each Sephira. Um, and you can see... She has tarot cards and then the color scales down here. So those are the three books that um, I would recommend if you're looking for something to kind of start to put some of these ideas together with the Kabbalah, especially Kabbalistic color. Um, these should be fairly easy to find and affordable books. They're not obscure books. They're very popular books. Um, Let's look at a couple of decks really, really quick. I'm not going to get too in-depth into either of these decks, but I need to show them to you so that you understand something. These two decks in particular, and it's a little hard to see the title. Tilt that one up so there's not a glare. Both of the artists who did these decks, Lady Frida Harris for the Thoth deck and Ethel Calhoun for the Tarot's Color, both of these tarot card artists painted the tarot cards according to Kabbalistic color. So when you look at the, any of these reference sheets, whether it's in the Great Workbook or 777, and you look at that list of colors, you're going to start to see how they are painted in these two decks. Um, this one is really popular. Most of you know 
or probably will know about this deck. Um, so I'm not going to go into this one really at all. Um, but I'm going to show you this one briefly because I think this is a really super important deck. Um, this is a new one. Um, the deck is new, but the paintings are not. Um, Ithel Calhoun spent many, many years study studying Kabbalistic color. And when she created the tarot deck, she only painted the colors. Um, she did not paint any archetypal ideas, numbers, anything like that. She simply painted the colors. And I'll show you those really quick, a few of them, so you can kind of get the idea how she painted each Kabbalistic color scheme um, in her own abstract way um, for the tarot cards so that only color could be concentrated on. Um, I will do another post about this deck another time, um, but for now I just wanted you to understand why you are going to see this deck not only in this video, but why you see it in a lot of my posts. And it is simply because um, it is nothing but color and That's uh, what we're talking about today. It's just color. So to begin with this lesson, we are going to start with a number rather than a color. And that number is four. Um, I made this little diagram to so that we can hopefully give you guys some kind of idea of how color systems can be used to connect um, other things um, in astrology, tarot, and Kabbalah. So before we get started on this, we're going to do some drawing on here, but I, um, I wanted to explain something. So the, the basis of astrology, tarot, and Kabbalistic systems all break down into fourfold ideas, um, hence the number four. Um, so Basically, if you think about the four elements, the four suits of the tarot cards, the four court card figureheads, uh, four letters in the Tetragrammaton, uh, four worlds in the Kabbalah, and then there are four color scales. Um, the easiest way to study the relationships of all of those things is to kind of start with the most basic of occult concepts um, and really of life itself, and that would be the four elements. Um, fire, water, air, and earth. Those four elements are common to all the other four, fourfold systems, um, and they can kind of be used to glue them all together and, and start to make sense out of seemingly unrelated ideas. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of drawing on this to kind of illustrate that point. Get some pens here. Um, so we're going to start drawing the four elements on this diagram. And uh, we're going to start with fire. And traditionally, fire is represented by red. So we're going to, on this diagram, draw The symbol of fire, which was, is an upward facing triangle. I'm going to put that in red. We're going to move on and draw water here. That's going to be a downward facing triangle. In blue. We're gonna come down here and start with air. Um, air is traditionally represented in yellow. Um, this marker doesn't always show up very well on the video, um, so I'm gonna color it in a little harder so that we can see it. Hopefully you can see it. We're gonna draw the symbol for air. 
which is another upward facing triangle, but there's a line through it right here. That's air. And then the last circle here, we're going to draw um, the symbol for Earth. And traditionally, Earth has been represented in a few different colors. It can be green, it can be brown, sometimes black, um, depending on the system you're using. Uh, we're going to use green today because green shows up nice on the video. Um, but just so you know, when you are doing your studies that uh, you can use green, you can use brown, you can use black. All three of those things are used traditionally um, in that. So we're going to make the symbol for Earth, which is another downward facing triangle with a line through it. And that's for Earth. So as I mentioned before, there are a lot of other four fold systems that um, can be mapped out and connected in this way. So let's start simply with the suits of the tarot cards. Your wands, your cups, your swords, and your pentacles, or discs, or coins sometimes, um, depending on the deck. Your wands are always associated with fire. So we're gonna put them up here with the fire. Your cups are always associated with water. We'll put those cups up there. Your swords are associated with air. And your pentacles or discs are associated with earth. So there's our first connections. Fire and wands, water, cups, air, swords earth and pentacles. Next in the tarot, another connection we can make is the uh, court card figureheads, which are traditionally king, queen, prince, and princess. So your court cards may have different titles for the figureheads. Um, a lot of different decks do them a lot of different ways. For this video, I wanted to stick to just something that's easy to remember. So I'm going with our childhood archetypes um, of king, queen, prince, and princess, just so it's a little bit easier to remember. But uh, if you're watching this video with a deck that's titled different, just kind of make your your switches as you as as necessary. So your kings are always associated with fire. So we're gonna put him up there. Your queens with water. Your princes are associated with air, and your princesses are associated with earth. So now we have a couple of connections along with the elements. So there's three things that are connected now to each of to each one of these. So now I'm gonna go into some of the most simple concepts of the Kabbalah. We won't get too deep into that, but we, uh, just to show how things connect, we're going to start with um, the Tetragrammaton, which is the uh, Hebrew four-letter name for God. And that is Yod, He, Va, and a final He. Um, I laid them down in this direction because Hebrew is written from right to left. So this is the proper way to do it. And um, so your Yod, you don't really have to know too much about this just to know that it's connected to fire at this point. So we're going to put those up here. So now we know, for example, that your Yod's your wands and your kings all have a similar connection. So let's carry on. The secondary hay, or the first hay, sorry, is connected to water and therefore queens and cups. 
the ball is connected to air and therefore swords and your princes. And your final hay is connected to earth and therefore your pentacles and your princesses. So you see how these color separations are starting to happen. We're going to show uh, the four worlds of the Kabbalah because this is what's going to kind of segue us into color. This is where the color scales begin to happen. So, but just briefly, the color scales themselves, the four worlds themselves, excuse me, um, will be mapped out to this. So you will have your world of fire, which is absolute. Your world of water, which is Briya. You have your world of air, which is Yetzirah. And you have your world of earth, which is Isaiah. And again, we're going right to left because now we're into Hebrew concepts. So your world of fire, at Saluth, is here. Your world of water, Briya. Air, Yetzirah. And earth, Isaiah. See, now you can see how all of these colors kind of map out together and how they connect these, uh, these ideas. They can help you memorize. Once you get these color systems memorized, um, along with the elements, you can hinge so many different things off of these elements um, and this color system to kind of get a grasp on how Kabbalistic concepts um, and tarot card, traditional tarot card concepts kind of start to overlap um, and um, interlock with one another. Um, but this is kind of what they look like separated down to their bare elements. Um, let's take a look real quick at um, some tarot cards and how they, um, how they look on this. So um, I'm going to start with the tarot cards that represent just the base elements themselves, and those will be the aces. Um, and I'm going to be using the Thoth deck painted by Lady Pretty Harris to do that, um, since they are painted in the traditional Kabbalistic colors. So here's what they look like. Here, these are your aces. And um, you can probably just about tell what's going to happen here just by looking at these cards. So we're going to start with fire again. Obviously, we can tell where this one's going to go. It's going to go up here. Um, a really cool thing about this card, if you don't know, obviously it's connected to Yod, but Lady Frida Harris painted the flames in here as little Yods. Just kind of an interesting fact there about that card. Um, and then we have the the Ace of Cups, and you can see all the nice blue in there. There's a few other colors, but mainly blue. And that card is going to go with the water. And then we've got the Air card. Again, there's some other colors, but the main idea is all of the yellow, the yellow rays. All this is supposed to represent air. And then we have the Ace of Discs. Um, like I said before, um, there are different colors that are used for Earth. Um, this one's kind of cool because it uses both green and brown, so it really shows beautiful idea of Earth. So hopefully that kind of illustrates the basis of what we're about to get into with um, with the four color scales. Um, they all hinge off of this. So before we get started with actually looking at color and how to color in the book, um, for those of you that might be um, new to the Tree of Life concept, um, 
and also maybe uh, just as kind of uh, a little bit of an explanation of how we're going to organize the rest of this lesson, I wanted to go over um, the structure of the Tree of Life or the Kabbalah. So the Tree of Life is made up of what you see, these spheres right here, and um, they are known together as Sephiroth or singularly as Sephira. And there are 10 of them, and they number beginning up here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 down here at the bottom. These interconnecting pieces that you see are just simply called paths. And what they do is they connect each Sephira to its neighboring Sephiroth. And they begin up here with number 11. And again, number down um, all the way down to 32 right here. So there are 22 of those paths. Um, so 10, 10 Sephiroth, 22 paths for a total of 32 pieces in, in the Tree of Life. Now your tarot cards in a traditional 78 card deck can all be mapped to this image. And the way that that works is that um, all of your minor arcana and your court cards get mapped to the spheres. And then all of your major arcana or trump cards are mapped to the paths. And kind of what that looks like um, which we'll show a little bit more of later, but just to give you an overview while I have the numbers in front of us. Uh, your minor arcana start here with the aces, number one. These would be your aces. These are your twos, your threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, and tens. So all of the twos would be here, and so on. Your court cards are also mapped to these, but um, that's a little bit more complex of a subject that takes some time to explain. So I, at some point, I'll do a separate video just for how the court cards map out on the uh, Tree of Life and why. Um, but for now, all you need to know is that uh, your minor arcana and your court cards all get mapped to the Sephiroth in the tree. Your major arcana or trump cards, again, are mapped to the paths. There are 22 paths, just as there are 22 major arcana cards. And they begin here with number 11. This is the Fool. And they number on down again, all the way down to um, the very last one here, number 32. So that's kind of how the, the tarot cards get mapped. Um, the other aspect of the Tree of Life that we need to mention before we go any further is the four worlds. I know we mentioned uh, basically just that there were four, wor four worlds and the names of them in, um, in the fourfold lesson we just did. But now we have some imagery to kind of look at that a little bit more. And this is kind of what it looks like. We split them out into four pieces. Um, we're not gonna go into this lesson. Uh, that's going to be in another video. I just wanted you to see kind of what it looks like here. And again, uh, these four worlds are re represented by fire, water, air, and earth. So if, if you take the 32 pieces that you see here and you put them down and split them out into four worlds, you're going to multiply each of those 32 pieces times four. That means that you have a total of 128 pieces in the four worlds of the Kabbalah. That begins to translate into color and to your tarot cards as well. And um, we will look at that here in the next section of the video. So here we are back again, um, and now we're starting to look at some things that actually have color in it. Um, and I should have mentioned this before, but um, your book, 
and you order it will not look like this. It will be blank. Um, everything will be blank in it. This is a, this is my personal filled out, uh, and colored in copy, uh, just to kind of make that little disclaimer there. I overlooked it, but, um, okay. So now we're starting to look at color. This is the first lesson you come up on in the book that has areas for coloring. Um, and what this is, this is the lesson on the major arcana, uh, and or the paths. So these are not all of your 128 colors, but these are simply the ones that relate to the paths. Um, let's look over here. And it might seem a little bit backwards, but when you're using the book, the flow makes sense. This right here are the other colors uh, for your minor arcana. So these combined with these are your 128 colors. So the way that this is structured Real quickly, just so you see, this is structured similarly to the um, the lesson, I sh or the, I'm sorry, the reference sheet I showed you in the back of the book where you have your king scale, your queen scale, your emperor scale, and your emperor scale. So that's kind of what that looks like. Now let's look at them all and what they look like. And when you view them as the four worlds on the tree of life, these are all of your colors here. And um, this is your world of fire, water, air, and earth. And each one of these color systems is specific to one of those worlds. So let's take a look at a couple of tarot cards. Um, as I said before, these Sephiroth um, are numbered one through 10, which match up with your numbers on your minor arcana cards. So I'm not gonna start up here with what are the aces because these are white and it's just simply hard to talk about color to in depth when everything's white. So let's start with the twos, which would be here, 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 and here. So if we're in the world of fire, right here, which is also wands, that means that this represents the two of wands. This being the world of water, this would represent the two of cups. This one in the world of air would represent the two of swords. And this one in the world of earth will represent the two of discs or pentacles or coins, whatever it's called in your deck. So for this part of the lesson, we're going to be using the uh, Thoth deck painted by Lady Frida Harris uh, to kind of show how this stuff it's translated into these cards. So these are going to be, these are obviously your minor arcana. And um, as I said before, you have, this would be a two, two of wands. So let's start with the two of wands here in the world of fire. And that is the two of wands. So this blue color that you see in the background here, or I'm sorry, not in the background, but um, in this uh, Sephiroth Sephira here is in the background right here on this card. There's that blue in the background. You also see a lot of other stuff going on in here. See a lot of red, a lot of orange, yellow going on in here. Um, and let's talk about why you see more than just this color. As we said before in the fourfold lesson, um, we are taking into consideration here the element as well. Um, the color of fire um, is red. So that's kind of why you see a lot of reds here, but there's some other stuff going on in each of these cards um, that you need to take a peek at. So let's see if we can get 
put in focus there. There we go. You see that that's the sign of Mars. And then down here we have the sign of Aries. Both the planet Mars and the zodiac sign Aries both are represented by the color red. So that's why we see a lot of red going in here, um, as well as the blue in the background. So when Lady Frida Harris painted these decks, she was trying to combine elemental, planetary, zodiac, and Kabbalistic attributes into one piece of art. So in all of her cards in the Thoth deck, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see very specific colors based on what is actually going in in this card. So this card is Mars in Aries and it's in the world of fire. And that's why you see it like that. So let's take a look at over here, this one is the Two of Wands. So here we're gonna have the same thing kind of going on in this card. Um, we are now in the world of water. Obviously the blues are all about the water. Um, and if we look up in here, see if we can get that one to go into focus so you can see it. We have Venus and Cancer. So, Venus is typically represented by greens, right in here. And we blend the yellow with the blue to get the greens. Cancer tends to be represented kind of in, um, somewhere in a rusty orange, reddish hues, which you kind of see in here. Um, you also see the green in the stem of the lotus here the green of the water, so that would be um, Venus, Venus and Cancer. But when you look at this, what color is that? That's gray. You don't necessarily see gray. Maybe you do a little bit in the water. If you look hard enough, you can kind of see some gray going on in there, a little bit. Um, but another way sometimes, and you'll see this in some of the other cards that she painted, you kind of have to think about the idea of how colors actually, how color pigments mix together. And so if you've ever mixed any colors and you mix anything with gray, you know that gray takes on the hue of whatever you're mixing it with. So, you know, in this card, I've always kind of imagined that there is gray, but it's just kind of underlaid behind and built up with color. That's the way I kind of like to imagine that card anyway. So now let's look at the, um, the Two of Swords. Let's take a look at what we got going on here. So down here, you see the sign of Libra and we see the moon up here. So this one is represented by the moon in Libra. We are in the suit of air, the, which is also the element of air. So you see the yellow that represents air in the background here. Libra is often represented by an emerald green. So you can kind of see this idea of emerald green fading into the element of air in the background. Your moon uh, is often represented by silvery blues, which you can kind of see going on here. A little bit of blue in the lotus also. But this color that you see here um, almost isn't even a color at all. It's kind of described more as an iridescence, which is not easy to paint, or at least it wasn't at the time that um, Lady Frida Harris painted these cards. We now have lots of beautiful iridescent paints, um, but I'm not sure she had access to that um, back in the 1940s. Um, so I think that's kind of what she's trying to illustrate here. She always used these really, really cool geometric shapes to represent air. Um, and I think that that's supposed to kind of represent that iridescence right here. But to me too, the swords 
and the lotus, they, they kind of look iridescent too. But yeah, that's how the color of that card maps out. So next we're going to look at the two of uh, discs. Um, in this deck, uh, the suit of earth is called discs. Um, it might be called something different in your deck. Could be pentacles, could be coins, uh, could be anything else. Um, uh, it really doesn't matter what it's called. That's why I left these areas blank so that you can fill it in specifically for the deck that you like to use. Um, but just for this one, um, since we're using the Thoth deck, they are called discs. So um, before we look at the card, let me talk about this. It's really hard to see on the video, so I have to describe what this is. This color is described as being white flecked with red, blue, and yellow. So when we start looking in this card, we kind of see some blue hues. Um, Maybe not necessarily reds, maybe some more pinks, uh, lavenders, purples. And, um, but we definitely do see the yellows. Um, we see maybe a little bit of green that's supposed to represent the element of earth. But when we start looking again at those planetary and zodiac attributions, then we can start to see why this card looks this way. So let's take a peek at what that is. See that? There's Jupiter. And down here's the sign of Capricorn. So what we've got going on here is Jupiter and Capricorn. Now Jupiter is typically represented um, in hues of violet. Um, and Capricorn is represented kind of in indigo colors, dark, dark blue. So we have a couple of really heavy pigmented colors that go into making this card. Uh, first, and the other thing is that Jupiter is, you know, has a big influence on everything it touches, right? So it's kind of turned everything violet, um, which um, even, even the indigos have turned kind of violet because Jupiter is a big deal. Um, it hasn't really tainted the yellows. Um, I think uh, as as uh, someone who studied color for a very long time in art school, um, I think that's because it's this complementary color, but um, that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, so that's how that card is kind of built. And that's why it is painted in the colors that it is. So when you look at these cards in the Thoth deck, um, and any other deck that may be painted um, from traditional Kabbalistic color. The colors in these cards are not random in any of the cards in the deck. Every color has just as much meaning as a symbol in here. Um, and they open up a different world when you learn how to read the color. Um, Again, it's not random. Lady Frida Harris painted this deck specifically by what you see here. Along with the elemental, planetary, and zodiac col traditional colors. So that is your minor arcana. Let's take a look at the major arcana. Because those are done actually a little bit different. Now, when we looked at the Minor Arcana, we saw that we had one card for each of the twos that we see here, um, and those all mapped out. But when we get into the path work, these are the Major Arcana or the Trump cards. We don't have four fools. We don't have four hermits. We don't have four chariots. Um, we only have one of them. But we still have four worlds. So the way that that tends to be represented in the tarot cards is all four colors on a path will be used in one 
painting on a card, in one trump card. So let's take a look at this one up here, which is the full. See, so we see here we have a yellow, a light blue, an emerald green, and an emerald green flecked black. So here's what that looks like. Let's take a look at the full. There it is. You can see all of those colors going in there. You can see the yellow. You can see a light blue, an emerald green, and an emerald green with black. You kind of see some of the black going on around in here. Let's look at um, how it's represented in Rider Waite deck. Same thing going on. You can definitely see all those same hues. And then again, in Tarot's color, same thing. So let's look at all those together, because I think this is really cool. At least it was to me when I first realized these things weren't random. You see how all those decks have something similar going on in them? How they all kind of match? Because they were painted based on the traditional colors of the Kabbalah. Pretty cool, huh? Now that we've kind of go over gone over the um the structure of how the color and the tarot cards are mapped out together let's take one more look at this reference sheet and then i'm going to go through um actually how to color the book and maybe a couple of sequences that could help you out in that so um again when when you looked uh before at this particular page here Every single one of these colors, these are all 128 colors, are right here on this chart. And um, if you use, once you fill out this, you'll have your numbering system laid out in here. This can help guide you. I've also added numbers in the sides of the lessons to help guide you um, that all relate to this numbering system that's back here. So again, the way that you're going to read this is you're going to look at your numbering system. You're going to look at which world you're, co you're coloring in, uh, whether it's um, one of the Sephira or one of the paths. At, this, at that point, once you fill in some of the beginning parts of the book, you should begin to know or at least have a reference for where these numbers fall. Um, so then you can use this to find out which color you need to apply um, to each part of the Kabbalah based again on uh, position on the tree of life and which color scale you're coloring. And then all your colors are listed here for you so that you don't have to go searching in another book um, unless you just enjoy doing that, then by all means, use, uh, use your own books. So this is the first lesson in the book that we come to with color. Now, um, you do not have to start coloring on this lesson. You can actually start coloring on any of the lessons. The only thing I recommend to you is that you fill in the information before you start coloring and you fill the information in, um, as we've said in some of our other videos and in the preface to the book, fill in the information in the order that it's presented to you because each lesson builds off of a previous one um, to kind of build up information throughout all of the activities in this book. But once you fill all of that in and you're ready to do your coloring, it really doesn't matter where you start to color. Um, and you could start here. You could start here. You can start in this lesson. Um, or you can simply start in any of the journal pages, which also have places for color as well. Um, it really doesn't matter where you start. But what I'm going to recommend that you do when you do start coloring, 
and I'm going to share this information with you because when I started coloring in this book, um, I actually did it wrong, uh, which is weird, I know, because I created the book, but there's a little bit of an aspect here I didn't think of when I created the book and when I then uh, began to color it is that I started out here with this lesson here. And I started up here and I wanted to color all the way down. And then I came over here and I did these guys and I carried on and I'm like, all proud of myself because look, I've got this page. This looks awesome. This is what it looks like. It's the first time I had seen it too. Well, then I got to this part to start this lesson and I couldn't necessarily remember what pencils that I used to mix or blend some of these colors. I couldn't remember exactly what I used. So I had to figure it out again when I did this lesson. Um, so here's my suggestion. It doesn't matter where you start, like I said, but let's say for example, that you do start here. If this is where you start, this color is emerald flecked with black. My suggestion is that you, you take out the pencils that, it, that you need to create this particular color and you, you do this and you don't put them away. You find everywhere else in the book that you're gonna have to actually color that same color. So it will be colored here again. So go ahead and color it there. It wouldn't be colored here because we were speaking, this, this is, this is your major arcana. These are minor arcana. So these colors are not repeated here and these are not repeated here. And we'll look at that in just a minute. But the next place that you would be adding color would be in, in the Kabbalah journal. So if you were coloring path 11, then you find path 11 and there it is this is your emerald flecked black you color it here again now the next place that you're going to color that is in the tarot card journal in this particular journal and we're going to be looking for path 11 or the fool which is here and again right down in here there it is again you're going to color it there so just so that you know, each color gets repeated four times in the book. And um, so that would just be my suggestion to you as a way to um, just make things easier for you um, when you begin coloring. You'll just save yourself a lot of headache if you color them all at once. So. That also brings me to another point um, that we we put into the instructions on this book, but I have to say it again so that everyone understands that we recommend that you do not use markers to do these exercises for a few reasons. Number one, um, markers are harder to mix and blend to get the shades that you need. Um, but number two, um, even though we use high quality, um, what's called opaque paper for this um, in a pretty decent thickness um, for text weight. Uh, marker, some markers will always go through um, and you don't want that. Um, so we recommend uh, using color pencils for these lessons. We also recommend that you get a large set of quality color pencils large because the larger your set of pencils, um, the uh, less mixing and blending you're going to have to do to get some of these shades because sometimes one pencil is going to be enough. And um, we recommend quality pencils because no matter how large the set is, you are going to have to do um, a, some mixing and blending in some of these shades. And the quality pencils, just they just mix better. A um, little bit easier to blend and get a nice opaque solid um, color um, for you there. So that um, that is our recommendation um, for that. 
Uh, one other recommendation before we walk through real quick coloring in the book. Let me get something over here. So this is another thing that I learned on my own that I should have, and it will in future editions of the book, it will be in here. Um, I should have put it in here. Um, when, when you go to color anywhere in this book, um, especially in these pages here, you're going to want to have some sort of scrap piece of paper of some really good thickness. Um, it, and it doesn't have to be a scrap paper. Honestly, sometimes I actually just put an envelope. I use an, an envelope. And what you're going to want to do, let me turn back a couple pages here so it's a little easier to talk about. What you're going to want to do when you color anywhere in the book is you're going to want to put a piece of scrap paper in between before you start coloring in, in here. And here's why. So for example, if you had already colored this purple here and you started coloring this red, what's going to happen is that purple is going to transfer to this page when you start bearing down on it, kind of like a carbon copy. Um, so to stop that from happening, you can put something in between. Then once you, once you color, um, it's not going to transfer to this page. It will transfer to your scrap paper, which is fine. Um, but with something in between, especially something nice and thick, you can bear down pretty hard. Um, the paper can take it. Um, we tested that out a lot. Um, you can bear down pretty hard to get a nice good solid in here with your color pencils. Um, and it's not going to, again, transfer to any of the colors behind it. So that's uh, the last suggestion that I would make, again, um, out of things that I learned after I made the book. Um, so we're going to come back in just a second, and we will begin to talk about exactly how to color the book. So we're going to start um, looking at how to color the book, and this is the first lesson where color comes up. And again, you do not have to start coloring here. You're welcome to start coloring anywhere you want to in the book uh, um, with the caveat that all your information is already filled out. Um, it's really up to you how you use it. Um, but um, so for this, your, your major arcana, trump cards. This is the first lesson where color comes in. And in this lesson, what happens is you go in and you start filling in your information for your trump cards, your um, the card number, the path name, some astrology, and uh, some Yetzeratic text. Um, but when you get to this side of the page, this lesson is really big. Um, this flows all the way across, and you can see over here, we're looking at number 11. We continue with number 11 in here. If you can see that over there, it's the full. So we'll, we'll use the full as an example again, um, just to kind of show how that all works out. Um, let me grab, let me grab the full. And we'll have him kind of waiting right there. So, um, This whole line right here is the fool. And again, um, as we looked in the lessons, you can see the yellow, the light blue, the emerald, and emerald flecked black. Um, those are all the areas that are colored in specifically for that um, major arcana card. The next lesson where color is used is this one. And again, we've already looked at this. So you've got the same yellow, blue, emerald, and emerald flecked black in those areas right there. Again, these are for minor arcana colors. Um, we'll come back and look at those after we go through the, the major arcana. So that was two places that you're going to put the color for that. The third place we're going to put color for this particular card 
uh, because again, this was path 11. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn in the book until we find path 11. And then those same four colors that you saw, again, here, here, are repeated here. You can kind of see that together. Once you just see only those colors, it's a little bit easier to see the, the makeup of them in the card. Um, but this, this is in um, the Kabbalistic Tarot Journal, Tarot and the Kabbalah. Uh, there's another part of the journal um, in here. Uh, for tarot cards specifically. And that's right here. And we're gonna look at the minor, or, or sorry, excuse me, the major arcana, because we're looking for the fool, which he should be there first. And these are repeated again in this journal. One of the reasons why um, I did this when I created the book, it was out of my own personal need to be able to cross-reference things at any time. Um, so if I'm studying the fool, I can simply turn to that page and reference everything that's related to it in notes I may have taken. But if I were studying path 11, I can simply turn to path 11 here and use this part as a reference. So that's why there's so many places where you're going to fill a lot of information in over and over and over again, um, at least four times. Um, for each one. Um, so that is the last place where the major arcana is colored. Again, when we look at the back of the book, you can see on path 11, there's the list of those colors, bright pale yellow, sky blue, blue, emerald green, and emerald flecked black right across there, just as you saw here, which we would have written them in and in the previous sections. Now let's look at the minor arcana and we're going to pull the uh, the two of wands out again to kind of go over that, put that aside there for a second. Um, the first place that minor arcana are filled in is in this lesson and it's with the spheres as we went over before here, 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 and there. This lesson is the next one with color for the minor arcana. And it starts out on this side with some of the Kabbalistic attributes listed. But down the middle of it, I, I put this strip that shows you what number you're looking for and then the tarot suits. So if we're looking at the two of wands, which would be here and here, we're gonna come across and we're gonna find it there, pure soft blue right there. That one little color. So this is this is where that pure soft blue comes in. For your minor arcana only. The next place you're gonna color would uh, be also in the Kabbalistic journal. And um, because we're looking for a two, we know that's going to be Hokma, number twos. And you can see it here. It's going to be colored there. It's right there. Uh, then we're going to color those again in the tarot journal. But we're going to skip over the major arcana. Sorry about that. Give me just a second here. Should have bookmarked it. There it is. In the major, sorry, the minor arcana journal, we're going to find the two of wands. And there it is. Now, unlike the major arcana journal, 
where all four were put together. Um, if you think about that, remember in our lesson before, we mentioned that all four colors are used in that, uh, in, in the uh, major arcana cards. But because you get four twos, only one of the Kabbalistic colors is shown. Um, so there's only one place to fill in color in this particular journal. And it would be right here. So that's it uh, for uh, the color lessons. Um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us um, if you find any information. Um, uh, we are, and I am, always open to con constructive criticism. And um, I hope the video helps you along um, in using the great workbook and um, just in your color studies in general. Thanks so much for watching.